Right, um, I just want to make this little video here uh, just to show you something that you may struggle with when you're reassembling your engine. Um, and it's a point to note. If you if you look um, carefully at the at the end of the crank, you'll see that the, 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 the end of the crank's got a machined part, a nice and flat machined part on it. But it's not exactly flat. You'll see it's 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 you can't see very well on this video, but it's not a flat end into the corner. Now, it took me a bit of figuring out because if you look carefully there, you'll see the the woodruff key is only perhaps a one inch long in a woodruff key and you'll see that the woodruff key has got to accommodate both the sprockets and the pulley uh, and I, I couldn't figure out why this the oil pump this is the one that works the oil pump the first cut the first one that goes on works the oil pump and I just didn't understand that it was free it was it was free moving uh, and um, I was a little bit puzzled I thought perhaps I thought perhaps there'd be a spacer on it, but let me just uh, show you. Right, the one thing you've got to notice is, on the sprocket itself, it's the thinner of the two sprockets. Let me just, just show you. There's a thick sprocket and a thin sprocket. Right, and you'll also notice that this sprocket, they both look the same this side, they've got the serial numbers on them, but you turn them over the other side and you'll see one's a flat sprocket and the other one's chamfered. Now it took me a little bit of working out and a bit of detective work and I figured out that the reason that one's cham the reason the, the, the oil pump one is chamfered, even though it's got a Segway for a uh, uh, Woodruff key, I figured well it could be a sprocket from another model that they've just used on this and the Woodruff key was, is there. But anyway, you must remember to put the chamfered side into this into this here because this is this is shaped it's not flat right the way down to the center of the shaft and I figured that that was so that when you put the when you when you actually put the sprocket on it, it'll meet up flat with the it'll meet up flat it'll meet up flat with the end of the crank it, it, may, it sits flat tight up to that crank there you can just see the gap if you was to put it on the other way around if you was to put it on the other way around, it would jam because it's not flat. It would it would be on really really tight. And the other thing to note, if you put it on this this way around, it lines up correctly with the that lines up then correctly with the sprocket that fits on the oil pump here. I'll just put that back there for you. If you was to put it the other way around. If you were to put if you was to put this sprocket on the other way around, not only would it would it jam up against the chamfered internal there on the crank, it, it wouldn't line up it wouldn't line up with this sprocket here. So you'd be running your chain would be running at a slight angle. So that's the first thing to bear in mind. Put it so that the chamfered side points inwards into the into the sprocket there, into the onto the cam, like so. The second sprocket that goes on, I found that both the serial numbers point outwards, by the way, if they're, at, they're at the correct way around. The serial number's there. And, and I'm assuming that these sprockets also fit a different vehicle. Because the, if it was turned that way, you'd see several marks. And the only reason I can think of those marks is to do it in increments for timing the engine up. But in this instance, those, those, those don't apply. Because if you put it, if you put the sprocket on that way, then your chain, your timing chain that drops, your timing chain that drops down here, if you had it on the wrong way around, it, it would be too close to that, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't line up with the top pulley, with the, with the top crank, uh, with the cam pulley at the top here. So you must remember that both the both the sprockets go this way on. And the other thing, while you're doing these sprockets. You'll know you've got them correct. You'll know that you've got them correct. I'll just turn this around for you. Because you'll find, if it's the right way, you'll you'll see that a good indicator, like I used when I when I was trying to work out which way around they went, you've got to make sure that that sprocket's lined up with this here. So that can only go one way. If it goes the other way, the, the chain will not be running parallel. 
so you'd get sprocket wear and also your second sprocket would not be lined up with the the feed the oil feed for the chain it wouldn't line up there so the, the, that that would be your indicator that you've got everything right because if there was both the other way around if you put that sprocket on first because I you know you've got to try and think how it would be assembled and this sprocket is locked on to the woodruff key but you can see it's only just locked on it's not locked on by very much because then you've got then you've got your pulley you've got your keyway and your pulley that also sits on the end so when you when you pull this together without the timing cover and I'll show you you guys what I mean you have to excuse me the poor amateur video ish I'm afraid but that's the way it goes when you but I'm just trying to make it a bit simpler for you to when the pull is on when the pull is on you can see the gap increasing there I'm just pulling the pulley out a little bit look see the pulley opening up when it's when it's tight up it press that it'll press that sprocket onto the back of the cam onto the back of the crank I'm sorry now if that was on the wrong way around it would wedge and that and I've heard reports where people have had to use a puller to get this off this is just a sliding fit onto the crank so if you put it on the wrong way it would wedge it because it's a, it's got a slight chamfer on the crank at the end so just bear that in mind so there that's the overall view of it now and I, um, I hope that's helped some of you remember your timing when that's at 12 o'clock your pistons at top dead center on number one this is number one the one nearest the timing cover and also you'll find that the caps are numbered that's number one remember when you take them off number one is the one nearest the timing cover two three and four and they're, they're numbered respectively always get them that way around make a note of which way the numbers are facing as well because you could put these caps on either way you want to be putting them back on the way you took them off so note which way the numbers go as well look yours your engine might be different your engine might have the, the caps the different way around but make sure you put them back the same so that's another little video i hope it's been of help i should have made it before i assembled it but just to help uh, <coughs> help anybody who might get confused like i did this spins freely and the pump is so easy to turn I, it doesn't need a woodruff key but if it ever came loose that wouldn't spin and then your oil pump wouldn't work but the, the pressure from the the pressure from the crank bolt pulls that towards this and it locks it all up so thanks for watching